Well, check it out. I just busted this out for the first time. Text manual for the Titan 340. Also got the parts and figures manuals. I feel like I'm making progress when I've got new manuals that I hadn't even got to. Cool, I like it. Um, first step here, locate the header tank mount per figure 1108, transfer drill number 30 through each tab. So here's the mount. Um, it gets transfer drilled to the mounting tabs in the cage. Makes sense. Uh, here's the mount here. Actually, let's go take a look at it. I believe it goes in this orientation. Two tabs back there. Got a tab on the side there. And I believe one up front there. That's gonna go like so. You know, as I'm sitting here looking at this, I'm realizing that this would have been a great step to do before the floorboard skins were in. Um, Cause then I could have just popped, I could have set it where it needed to be and just popped the holes right in there. But that's not how it happened. So I'll just use my hole finder um, I should be able to get a hole finder here, no problem. This one might be a little tricky. You might just have to measure it. I don't know, we'll see. Um, probably can get a hole finder here as well. I don't know, I'll work it out. All right, so I got over from this edge to the flange three and five eighths, and then back from this, the back side of the tube to the front side of the mounting plate is uh, three eighths. There we go. That was actually a piece of cake with a hole finder. I was able to get to all of those, no problem. Manual says to glue the rubber strip on the top of the flanges here, so I'll do that next. Then it says to go ahead and rivet it down to the tabs. Um, I'm gonna, I got a little bit more work to do before I do that because I never did rivet the bottom skin to these tabs along here uh, because I needed to get some spacers in there. See, I've got a little bit of a gap on these and I just never got around to doing that. Well, once I rivet this cover on here or this mount for the header tank, I'm not gonna have access to slip these um, spacers in here underneath these tabs. So I guess I'll go ahead and and get this done now so that I can move forward on, on the uh, fuel tank mount. Manual calls for gluing this rubber strip on the edge of the flanges here. And yeah, that, that works, but I know how this goes. This stuff, when you use this and you glue it on, especially such a small surface area there to glue on, inevitably it just comes off. So I think I'm gonna use my neoprene foam tape and I'm gonna fold it over and run it all the way down. The adhesive on this is permanent. <laughs> Once you get that on and stick it down, it destroys the tape trying to pull it off and then you, it doesn't come off I guess is what I'm saying so um, I think this will be fine just for abrasion and it'll stick I know it'll be good
Now what I'm gonna do is fabricate a support angle that's gonna go from this tab here to this tab. I'll have to notch it out as it comes up and over this one, I guess. Um, but that shouldn't be too difficult. Here's what I landed on. I made a little bit of a deviation from the manual. What I didn't like was I had to notch this to clear that support, and I notched that one too, so I kind of did a little bit in either one. But I don't like removing material on the web of this angle because that really that makes it only as strong as whatever the thickness of the web is right there. So what I did, maybe a little overkill, but I doubled it up with another piece of smaller angle. And this will sit here. And then what I'll, I'll come over here and I'll show how it fits. So a little bit taken off of this one, a little bit taken out of that one, and I get clearance. And with doubling it up right here, it's really stout. This gets two holes to rivet to that angle. So I just uh, struck a line from this hole here to that one, uh, divided it into thirds, and I've got a hole that's gonna go there and one right there. Well, I put the skin here, which we'll see. I will match drill here and here, these two holes I put in. And then that'll all get riveted together. Something I'm noticing, there's a discrepancy in my manual. They've made a change. Used to be, I don't think this tab was here. I think, uh, used to be there was nothing there and they have you put a Adele clamp here and that's actually what you would attach to that corner of the plate. Uh, now there's a tab here, so just FYI, um, you do drill and rivet through the tabs. So, and I'm serial number 300, so this change happened somewhere before mine. I don't know how far back, um, but if you look at the manual, it does show that that would be a clamp, which they explain here locate clamp in this location. Well, they don't do that anymore. So um, again, they don't seem to be too big on version control on their manuals. So a lot of this is left up to you to figure out, but it's pretty intuitive. It kind of makes sense when you see it. Obviously I saw that there's a tab there now. So yeah, it makes sense. You're not going to put a clamp there. A tip I got from a couple other YouTubers building S21s is to run the straps for the tank uh, underneath between the angle support and the mounting plate before you rivet the mounting plate in. Otherwise, there's no way to, to get the straps in there. You, you could run them on the outside of that angle, but then it would be going outside there and coming up and I don't know, it, it's not right. That's probably a change they should make in the manual if you ask me. Um, but I'm glad I saw those other YouTubers doing that because that really helped me here. So thanks a lot. Um, I got these placed and now I think it's safe to, and I'm not, oh, also, I'm not riveting these yet because when these get riveted, it really clamps that support to this plate and it makes it hard to move these straps. And I don't know exactly where they're going to land yet. So I just have them inserted in there. And now I can take this over here and get this kind of set in place. And what I'll do now is go ahead and uh, rivet on all the tabs. And then I'll, once I know where these straps go, I can slide them a little bit. I'll go ahead and pop these two rivets in here. One of my tank mount straps uh, bent up here. One thing I do on a, on a piece like this, so what they do is they notch it out there and they got it ready for you to bend. Um, what I like to do on a piece like this that isn't really a structural load bearing piece, 
on a bend like that, I like to hit it with my torch and just anneal it about a half inch back on either side of the bend. Not a lot. Uh, you, you, you're just heating it up to the point where you're just annealing the metal just a little bit. And that's just gonna reduce any stresses in the metal so that when you bend it, you should get a nice clean bend and a little bit less risk of cracking. Now it does weaken the metal. It does soften it in that area where you've annealed it. That's why you wouldn't wanna do this on a, on a high stress component. Uh, but on a piece like this, no problem. And you're just hitting it with the torch until it, if you've done it a few times, you kind of know where to stop. If you haven't done it, be careful. You can overdo it and you can start to melt the metal. So if you haven't done annealing, maybe you don't do it. Or try some scrap parts and kind of see where it needs to be. But it's something I do and it's what I did here. Made it bend real nice. I know I'm not gonna have any issues with this cracking at any point later. I like to hit it one more time after the bend to kind of normalize the metal there. I'm using some of my thin neoprene tape here and I just put a couple strips of it on the uh, strap cover here. And I just like that it separates the metal from the plastic. It's for chafing or whatever. So I, I wish I would have had a three quarter inch wide strip of the 16th, 16th inch thick uh, tape, but I didn't have any. So I just used a couple of my quarter inch wide strips. It works. Okay, moving on to number one here of header tank assembly. Locate and drill the fitting holes in the header tank per figure 1109. Do not drill the sump drain holes until the tank's in the fuselage. Okay, so if I go to 1109, you need to drill all these holes here, fuel inlet holes, uh, I do have the low fuel sensor, so I'll drill that hole and then the withdraw hole. And then I won't do the sumps because that comes after. And on that subject, it does say if you're doing, if you're possibly gonna convert from trike to tail dragger, you may want to install the sumps in both locations. And I am building this airplane to be able to go either or. That's why I have the trike engine mount. Not that I'm ever going to go trike. I, I, I might. Uh, it'll probably 99.9% .9 of the time this thing will probably be a tail dragger. But for a resale value later, I figured it would help if it could be converted to trike. Not a lot of people uh, want to do tail draggers. And to be able to, within a couple hours' time, flip this thing around and put it on a tricycle gear, I thought would add some value to the airplane. So uh, I am doing that. I will have to source another fuel sump. They only give you one, I believe. So I'll do that. For now, I'll do the tail dragger one. I'll order the parts and it may have to take the tank back out and put that one in later. But um, in any case, uh, what I need to do now is drill, locate and drill all these holes. They do tell you uh, double and triple check hole locations before drilling. I'm gonna go a step further and I'm gonna quadruple check because that is something I don't wanna screw up. All right, here we go. We're gonna look at these numbers together. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't screw this up. So looking at the uh, aft, the back end of it, they want you three and a half from the side, one and five eighths down. Okay. So one and five eighths down. And on the 10 there, Three and a half, okay? One and five eighths, oops, one and five eighths down there. Uh, this one, and then over one and a half. It's easier if I do it this way. I'll go off the four. Uh, one and a half over, okay? So these are good. Those get drilled to three quarter. Uh, three quarter and then on the side right hand side this gets a five eighths this is for the low fuel sensor it's eight and a half 
from the front, three inches down, eight and a half, three. That one's good, marked five eighths. And then lastly, this one. It's a three quarter, this is for the, uh, oh, what is this? This is the outlet, goes out to the fuel pump. This is uh, one and three sixteenths up from the bottom and one and a half over from the edge. So we'll take it from the edge, one and a half, and then up from the bottom, one and three sixteenths. So I have checked those, I checked them again, and then I just checked them right now. And it's good, so I'm going to go for it. I'm gonna use my step drill here, and uh, I've marked, the first one I'm gonna do is the 5 8 and I put a little silver Sharpie on that one with a couple little black hash marks. That'll just help me see it so I know to stop at the right one. You don't want to go too deep <laughs> and open it up too much. Oh, one thing, one thing I was noticing about this is it's quite heavy for what it is. I mean, it's really thick walled and it's not a light material. I was talking to one of the guys here at the air park that does um, composite work. He said, why don't you make it out of carbon fiber? Now, of course, this is coming from a guy who does a lot of composites work. I have done very little composites work. Most of my composite work has been 15 years ago when I was doing RC airplanes and gliders. It's been a long time. Um, but it got me thinking, this isn't that hard of a part to actually do in carbon fiber. And I'll bet you I could, I could get rid of 70% of that weight. So I think that's something that down the road I'm going to investigate. I'll get some, some help from him also, I'm sure. Um, but, because it seems like a real simple part. Like, there's just not a whole lot going on here. So, that might be something I do. For now, we're gonna stick with what Rand supplies and get this done. Here we go. Stopping at 5 8 It does say 5 8 on the manual, yes, okay. <laughs> you know, it said to pilot this first. I should, I should do that. I got a bit right here. Yep, one more. And I got the marks here, I just wanted to check. Boy, you really gotta go slow, it cuts this plastic so easily. Got a little burr there. Five eighths, yes. Okay, that one's good. Now, check my drawings again, yes. Okay, let's do it. Now I'm going to wipe this off and remark it at the three quarter. Okay, well it's got holes in it now. If they're in the wrong spot, I'm buying a new one. Or maybe I'll just accelerate the carbon fiber program. <laughs> Manuel said to wash it out with water, rinse it with water. Um, I just used my blow gun and got in all the holes and tilted it upside down so that the, uh, the chips could come out here. And it's clean as a whistle. 
There's nothing in there. I saw a bunch of stuff come out. I really hit it good. There's nothing in there. That's going to wrap it up for part one of the header tank install. Stay tuned next week for part two.